You know, I'll do a little different. I won't rewrite this. Just tell me what that is. So this is a separate line of thought here. Here, we've got that. We understand that. We, we agree on that. What is the derivative of the dot product? And you may be saying, why are you doing that? Just watch. Can I take the derivative of the dot product of two vectors? Yes, I just gave you the property just a second ago, didn't I? And it was like a product rule. It was, it would be what, like the derivative of that one dotted with what? This one plus the derivative of the second one dotted with the first one. Now, do you see why I did that? What I'm trying to show, right, isn't that this? Isn't that this? Yes? Now, put this side together. That's two of them, right? Since they're the same thing? Who's going to tell me what the left side of this equation is? Like, if I'm looking at this as an equation, this derivative, right, is this. Maybe I shouldn't look at it like an equation. I think that would be too confusing. We agree with this. Yes? We're OK? OK. But can anyone tell me what this should be? Zero. Why? Because uh, he said zero. The vector function dotted with itself. This times th dotted with this is what? A constant squared. What's the derivative of any constant squared? Zero. So this has to be zero, doesn't it? So therefore, three dots is therefore. Therefore, two r prime t dotted with r t must be zero. Divide by two, both sides. If you divide by two, what do you get? what you want to show. And we're done. Is that weird or what? That seems strange? So. See, when you look at the when you look at like a proof of something, this isn't really a proof because that's not really a theorem necessarily. Um, it, when you look at someone's work that shows that something is true, sometimes you'll look at it and you'll be like, yeah, that's obvious. I can see exactly why they did that. But then there's other things like this where it's like, well, why did they do that? Like, who showed them to do that? And that's the challenge of, for mathematicians, is to have something that they have to show. And the way you do it is not necessarily like just following a trail. Sometimes you have to come in through the back door and figure out another way to attack the problem. This is a perfect example of that. OK, we're moving on. OK, so we're now going to focus on some applications of derivative functions, of derivatives of vector functions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow through this pretty quickly. There, I want you to look at two vector functions, which I'm calling r1 of t and r2 of t. r1 of t is t, t squared. The other one is t squared, t to the fourth. All right? I'm going to show right now that just by convincing you with a picture, I'm not going to go through this whole um, example. You can do that on your own if you'd like. I'm just going to show you the picture. Ah, oh, it's too big. There we go. So we're having a little, uh, a little comparison. Here's R1 of t. Here's R2 of t. I've had the computer graph them for me. Do they look to you to draw the same exact curve? Do they draw the same curve? It looks like it, right? And I'm going to tell you, yes, it is true. They will draw the exact same curve. But does that mean that these, that these are the exact same vector functions? So, so what makes them different, right? That's, does that seem like a natural question? If they draw the same curve, then how are they different? Let me take you to a point in time. At t is 0, here's where we are. Here's where we are. 
Look at t is, uh, t is going to be 1 now. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be 0.25. T is now 1. Do they look like they're at the same place? Yes? OK, let's let t be 2. Oh, OK, so now something changed, right? This one's here and this one's here. But they're drawing the same curve, aren't they? Now I'm just going to play it. I don't know why it's flashing. It's kind of weird that it's flashing. Do you see it? Watch what happens to this point. It takes off. This one's moving much slower, isn't it? It's still drawing the same curve, but not as fast. So if you were actually like an ant, a little, little bug, an ant, or something crawling along this curve, this is bug number one, and this is bug number two. Bug number one is going slower than bug number two, right? How do we know that by looking at these two? I mean, how can we tell? Well, let me show you their derivatives. And let me back this up. I want you to look at the tangent vectors. What's the obvious difference between those two tangent vectors? One's longer than the other, right? This one's longer than this one. And if I back it up to, remember where they were at the same point at 1? Weren't, at t equals 1, weren't they at the same place? Yes? But the difference is this one has a vector that's very uh, long compared to this one. They're pointed in the same direction, aren't they? So that derivative vector somehow indicates the uh, velocity. velocity, the speed right, at which this is moving. And that's what we're trying to get at here. Um, the length of this vector compared to the length of this vector matters, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to tell us something. I think you get the idea. I, I have more stuff here. I can compare them at different values. Like I can, I picked some values here. At this point, the length of the uh, vector function is 4.7. Here it's 2.24. If I go up to this point, it's 8.06. But at the same point over here, it's 32. So this length's bigger than that. So I don't need to show you any, anymore. Are you comfortable with that? Yes. Yeah? OK. All right, so this is the summary of it. If r of t is a vector function which represents the path of a particle or object through space, and what we mean by that is not stars and moon, space meaning two-dimensional space or three-dimensional space or four-dimensional space, if r of t is a vector function and we have the path, the, the curve is a, a path, then we will call the r of t the position function. The Derivative of the, velocity, or the um, position function, we will call v of t, and it is called the velocity function. This look familiar? In Cal 1, you did this, right? Derivative of position was velocity. Derivative of velocity was acceleration. Okay? But there's something different here. When we take the derivative of r, we get a vector function, don't we? Angled brackets, vector function. And so we, we call this the velocity function. If we look at the magnitude of that derivative, it's a length, isn't it? That's the speed of the particle. So speed and velocity are not the same thing, right? Speed is the length of a vector. Velocity is the actual vector. Vectors have length and, and direction, don't they? So velocity is uh, very different than speed. They're related, but they're different. And then. If we take the second derivative of the position function, we get the acceleration function. The larger the magnitude of the derivative, the faster the particle is moving at that point in time. That's the homework for that section. OK? Actually, I have more, all right? There's going to be more, but we're going to move. Um, that was the homework that coincides to the derivative part of that section. All right, integration. Well, right after differentiation, you have integration, right? So if we have a vector function, three components, then the integral, the antiderivative of the vector function from a to b, dt, 
So the variable that we're integrating with respect to is t, because t is the variable, right? What is this saying we do? How do we integrate a vector function? Integrate each component, right? Which is the way the derivative worked. And we were happy with that, weren't we? So here's an example. Oh, man. Let's integrate this from 1 to e. So that means I want to take the integral from 1 to e of e to the t dt. I want to do the integral from 1 to e of t, square root of t minus 1 dt. And I want to do the integral from 1 to e of natural log t dt. And this class is not, you know, we're not going to go and like, let's remember how you do all the different techniques of integration. That's the class you took before this. So I would expect everyone, given enough time, without a, ca without a computer, could do these by hand. I think some of these are easy, though, right? What's the antiderivative of e to the t with respect to t? Itself, e to the t. And then I'm evaluating 1 and e. You all, you all comfortable with this notation? Yes? All right, and then the next one. Ooh, how would you do that one? Anyone have a, where are my in integral specialists in here? Any integral specialists? By parts. Integration by parts? Maybe. That might work. I wouldn't go that far. You wouldn't go that far? No. What would you do? I would uh, probably take the derivative of uh, what's inside of there. Here? Um, yeah. You know what? Never mind. Don't do that. Don't do that? Don't do that. Not a good idea. But you should have just said, I just do something. I just do something. Did, didn't that, that's what you said last time, right? Something in there? Oh, you could do a U sub, right? Basic U substitution would work on this one. I, I think. Hold on. Let's see it. Let's do it over here. If I'm trying to integrate t root t minus 1 dt, then I can make a basic substitution u is t minus 1. And if I do that, See, this is where we all come from different backgrounds when it comes to integration. And there's little subtle differences in the way integration is done from instructor to instructor. So um, if you don't follow what I'm going to do, the way I notate it, the way I attack these, you have your own way, good, you have your own way. I'm not here to teach you how to integrate. All right? So I would go du equals dt. And then I would just go about rewriting the whole integral in terms of u. So what can I replace t with? u plus 1. So just take this equation and solve for t. So u plus 1. And then what can I replace square root of t minus 1 with? Square root of u, which I'm going to write instead as u to the half. And then dt, I replace it with du. So that's what that new integral becomes. That's easier to integrate, isn't it? Because you can just pass the u to the half through and then integrate each one term by term. So I'm running out of room. I'll do it up here. Um, we have integral. There's two terms. What are they? u to the 3 halves plus u to the 1 half. And then you find the antiderivative of each one. What is the antiderivative of u to the 3 halves? 2 fifths u to the 5 halves. Yes? Yeah, something like that. Two fifths u to the five halves, right? What's u though? What's u? T minus one. So t minus one to the five halves. Then plus, what's the antiderivative of u to the half? Two thirds u to the three halves. And I'm evaluating that. I need a little more room here. 1 and e, right? I'm done with this one. I, I mean, I still have to plug numbers in, but I'm done taking the antiderivative. OK, now comma, antiderivative of natural log of t. Don't say 1 over t, please. <laughs> the antiderivative of natural log of t. You could do that one with integration by parts. Or you could just remember the formula. Anyone remember the formula? ln x minus x. So for us, it'll be t ln t minus t. 
evaluated 1e. So from here to here, integration by parts or formula. If, if you were in my Cal 2, or who's in my Cal 2? I just get, we, we derived the formula, didn't we? Like, do you remember that now? I said you could put it on formula sheet once we derived it. Okay. There we go. Close it off. Angled brackets. Vector. We're done. I said, who's in my calculus class? None of my Cal students want to raise their hand. They're like, I, I wasn't, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. All right, now plug in. Now plug in. So what is this? Plug in E first, right? E to the E. E to the E minus, now plug in 1, E, right? What's next? Oh, crap. That's ugly, man. E goes in here, E goes in here, right? And then 1, what about when 1 goes in? It's all 0, so I'll just write it out. Okay. 2 fifths. E minus 1 to, I'm not even, don't, don't get your calculator if that's what you're doing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is, this is a numerical result. We'll leave it in its exact form and we'll be happy. All right, so that's this part, right? And then when we plug in E here, let's see what happens. E times natural log E, what's natural log E? 1, so that's just E minus E, which is 0. Okay, great. If I plug in 1, uh, natural log of 1 is zero. 0, so that's gone, minus 1, so it so be plus 1, because remember that was in the subtraction. Very good. So plus 1. <laughs> All right, that's the answer. Our answer is a vector, isn't it? So if you integrate a vector function, from you know two points in time, your answer is going to be a vector. Any questions? So that you know this, what this means to you is that all that stuff you did in Cal two, it will creep up on us here. You will still have to integrate in this class. It'll be expected that you do remember you know how to do integration by parts and. Now, the integrals may not be as complicated as they were for you, but they'll still be on the table. All right, so like in class uh, test, I wouldn't give you like some weird partial fraction problem where it's going to take you like 30 minutes to break it all up and, you know, I wouldn't do that. But I would expect you to do some basic integration like this. Is that basic integration to you? I don't know. I guess that depends on you, right? All right. All right, where am I? <laughs> okay, look at this one. We start out with the derivative of a vector function. I'm telling you that r prime of t is this. And then I'm telling you that r of 0 is 1, 1, 1. So this is, this, if this is a particle moving around, I'm giving you its velocity function, right? And then I'm telling you something about its position, right, at time equals 0. But then you're asked to find the original position function. So we have to go backwards, don't we? We have to integrate. So what I want to do is integrate my r prime of t with respect to t. If I do that, that should give me my original position function, shouldn't it? Yes? So let's, let's integrate this. That's going to be a vector, right? Vector. And now integrate each of the component functions. So this one's a lot easier to integrate or not? Uh, well, maybe that last piece. What's the antiderivative of t? t squared. One half t squared. Okay. And then e to the t. And then how would you integrate 
T E to the T D T. Wolfram Alpha? No. <laughs>